good morning folks and welcome back to my workshop this is my Christmas video for you and obviously I'm not in the woods I'm in my workshop and I'm gonna do a project and that is giving a new lease of life to this knife now my friend Dan who owns the cabin in the woods gave me this knife he said he's added about 20 years and he doesn't use it and basically it needs a facelift Right then, well what can we say, it's an Arthur Wright Woodlow style knife. Talk about the knife first. Now, the grind on this is incredibly steep. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to take the handle off. I don't know if I can reuse these scales. Now usually when I take a handle off a knife, I stick it in a pan of boiling water to break the epoxy down. What I think I'll do, I'll grind the loveless bolts so they're flat, I'll drill them out and I'm going to soak it in hot water for a good few hours. Now I've got plenty to keep myself occupied today. I've got three knives I need to finish off so this can just sit in boiling water for quite a while. I don't even know what epoxy they use. Perhaps they don't even use any epoxy. I don't know. But that's the first thing, is to drill them out. Then when I've got a bare, bare blade, I'm going to put it on the grinder. I'm going to take the bevel back a little bit. Because I'm actually going to take the scales back a little bit as well. So I'm going to make the handle slightly shorter here. If I can salvage these scales, I'm going to put a liner on them. I'll put them back. So beef them out a little bit with a liner and then I can take material off to have a nice new fresh finish. I'm not sure what the wood is. It looks like walnut and I like walnut. So if I can save it, I will. If I can't, there we are. I'll put something else on. But yeah, that really needs regrinding. I clean the blade up. I won't rub it down. I'll just put it on a satin mop just to take the excess off it. At the end of the day, it's a 20 year old knife. I've seen a lot of use. And I think, yeah, it, it needs a facelift, but it still needs to keep a bit of a character. So that's what I'm gonna do with the knife. The sheath, I was thinking of making a new sheath, but I'm looking at it now and the knife rattles around in the sheath. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to cut the ferro rod loop off. Don't see much point in that. I'm going to take all the stitching loose and then I'm going to push it forward and re stitch it, re glue it, re stitch it, and hopefully make it look nice and fit better. If it doesn't work, I'll just make another one. Right, well, I'm going to carry on now with my. Uh, my day job which is doing these and then I will get back to you later on in the day which will be seconds to you it will be hours to me I wanted to take the shine off them so when I drill the drill won't slip on a shiny surface. I messed up. They came out fine. That one slipped. So, scales, gone. There we are. I'll just have to make some new ones. Now I'm going to boil the kettle up and I'm going to soak this for a couple of hours. Did I say soak it? Nah, don't need to soak it. I just looked at it now and it had actually pulled off. So it looks like there was no epoxy there in the first place. Nope, 
doesn't look like there's any epoxy at all on it and that's how rust has got into the blade well, that doesn't matter because I'm going to grind that off anyway well that is quite surprising that they didn't even put any epoxy in it well that saved me boiling a kettle of boiling water anyway price on for will these days well well I'm quite surprised Now that the handle's off, I've realised something else. What I thought were loveless bolts weren't. They were rivets. There was no thread on the bar and they're only 3mm. So I can't put any of my loveless bolts through there now because they're M4. So I'm just going to have to put some pins in there. Not going to look that sexy and not going to be that tough. There we are. You've got to work with what you got. Well, seeing as these were a write-off, I'm going to put my car to handle on. I looked in my wood box now, and nothing really suitable in there. I don't want to spend a fortune on this, and a lot of my wood I have is stabilised or some really nice stuff. So, I'm going to go with some my carter. I've got a piece of natural, and I'm going to put a red G10 liner. i got quite a bit of red G10 liner, so I thought I'd use them up. I'll cut them down on the bandsaw and then rough them up and glue them together. Cut roughed up. Now, very important. If you're going to glue liners on, clean them with acetone first. You want them absolutely clean so the epoxy will adhere perfectly so acetone I make a little jig thing which is you I'll show which you now so I'll put a bit of tape on you a bit of masking tape I'll put the liner down I epoxy both sides thin then clamp up everything with nice strong clamps um, I don't use screw down clamps, I use uh, spring clamps because if you use the screw down ones, you push too hard, it just slides off basically. We don't want that. Now one thing, it's really cold at the moment and uh, if the epoxy's cold, it just doesn't want to play ball. So I'll put it next to the heater, just for a couple of minutes to get it nice and uh, easy to mix. So I always cut the liner bigger than the actual material and if you're wondering why I'm bothering to put a liner on here, it's because this particular micata isn't very thick. It's 8mm and I really could do in 9 so that's why I'm doing this. When you put the main material on top of the liner, and I glue it this way, they do tend to move a bit and it is a good idea to make the liner bigger. 
it's a lot easier, a lot less stress and fiddling about. Now I'm going to take this out of here and I'm going to put it by the heater because although epoxy goes off when it's cold, for some reason it doesn't fully go off. It goes off better if it's warm. Strange stuff, but that's what I found. Time to clean this blade up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, I've got a worn 120 grit belt because if I'm uh, doing anything rusty, nasty bits of steel, I just use a worn one. So I'm going to flatten that off. I'm going to 90 the spine on it. I'm going to take the Dremel around here and clean that up. And then I'm going to regrind the bevel to my normal Scandi, tape, Scandi grind. And I got a little guide here. So it should take it back about two mil. And then we'll have a, a grind that'll actually do something. Right. Well, that didn't do much. I mean, I put it on a 60. <laughs> Now I'm going to put it on a coarse mop to get the crap off the flat. I just realized that that footage is going to be really blurred because of the vibration but I put it on three mops and it's a marked improvement yes it's not the nice mirror finish or a satin finish but it's clean and it's still got character we we'll call it character right grind And I'm going to take this bevel back about 3 mil. It'll tidy it up and it'll bring the cutting edge closer to the handle. I haven't gone all the way. It's not completely off because I'm going to do the other side and match them up. But that's quite the difference in grinds. And my grinds are relatively steep. This thing is ridiculously steep. That's both sides done. And they're both matching out. I'm going to take the Dremel in and take that bit out. And I'm going to go through the grits on the bevel. So they're both nice and shiny and nice and flat it's getting there what else just plugged in flatten that little hump out a bit now tidy that up now I do like this to be a bit crisp but I can do that when I put the handle on so yeah we're getting somewhere I'm back in the workshop it's been a few days I've had a lot to do right so the blade is done and I've wrapped it up now it's time for the handle well these are <laughs> quite a few days to cure huh? so that is solid and what I'm going to do now I'm going to go on the bandsaw, I'm going to cut the excess off and then I'm going to square these scales off on the disc sander. And the reason I'm going to square them off and not just 
put it on and do everything is because on a wood law where it meets the blade here there's a bevel and I believe it's 60 degrees so I'll be taking that with a square edge down to 60 degrees That's what I'm aiming for. Right, what I'm going to do now, now I do this, I don't think other people do it, but I put some double sided tape on here and I stick the handle in the right position and then I drill the holes. Then I mark inside so I can cut the excess off. Then I put the other piece on, drill through, take the first piece off. A mark inside that so I've more or less got a profile first one stuck on got my pins and tube now I'm going to drill them on the drill press now unfortunately the Sun is coming right into the workshop and it's very difficult to film so I can't film that because the Sun is right on my drill press but it's not brain surgery Drilling three holes. Now, one thing I should mention is when I drill these holes, I always drill the biggest one first. And then I put the tube in, so it stops it moving. Any slight movement can knock things off. So then I drill the front hole, I put the pin in, and then I drill the last hole. Now, personal preference, and I don't hear anybody talking about this, when I'm making a knife, I like to put that front pin or bolt quite far forward. Because if you think about it, if you're praying, and I know you shouldn't really be praying, but if you are praying, with that bolt slash pin further forward, you've got more strength there than having it that far back. My opinion, I think I'm right, but a lot of people don't do that. Right, so next thing now, I'm going to stick the other piece on, line it up, so it's square with that one, although I will rub them down when they're put together to make sure they're even. So put that one on, Drill it, then take this one off, and I usually mark this so I know which one I'm taking off. Because in the past, <laughs> I have taken the wrong one off. Not a deal breaker, but it's easier if you take the right one off first. Marked it side here. So I'll take that off. And I'll scribe around this line now. Drill countersunk, always countersunk them inside, get a bit of a epoxy in there, put them together, pins and tubes in, and they are not even. It's surprising because this has happened to me before. They are not even. So what I'll do now, I'll put a clamp, I clamp these together, and then I even them up on the belt sander. So that's taken all the, the big wheel marks off from the 80 grit disc. I'm going to put these now on the satin mop and then the polishing mop. And yes, before you say anything, to win that one handed was dangerous. I should have done it 200 but I was holding the camera. Right, I've just got a bit of residue now from the polishing wheel but I'll be taking that off with some acetone when I glue it on. So pull this off. Put 
polymer part. Now I'm going to go on the bandsaw and I'm going to go around that profile. Just rough, nothing fancy. I'm going to put them on the disc sander now just to, just to get a bit more excess off and then I can glue them on. And here's a tip for you. Never use blue roll on white <laughs> or cream micata because it stains it. Right, I'm going to glue this on now. As you can tell, I'm a complete skin flint and I reuse my gloves as much as I can. I know some people just use them and throw them away. I use them until they break. I think I should have warmed these up a bit. They're a bit cold. Not too much. And I'll get back to it tomorrow and I'll do the sheath hopefully finish it tomorrow back in the workshop and the epoxy's gone off nice and hard so that's fine ready to shape I'm not gonna do that now I'm gonna do the sheath right I did say earlier what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take it apart I'm gonna take that ferro rod loop off because it's a bit bit shit I'm gonna put a new rand in here and I'm gonna move the whole front of the sheath over because it's got a really big gap in it and I know when that knife goes in it's just gonna rattle around so yes this is gonna be a bit of a fiddle if it doesn't work I'm just gonna make another one in fact it'd be less bothering for me to make another one but I want to do the facelift Right, let's get this loose. This is a laborious job. You don't need to see this. Oh, there's the round out. That was pretty easy. It is less bother than I thought. Now I've got to pick all this stitching out. Well, in fact, I don't have to take it out on the front one because I'm going to be cutting that off anyway. So we'll take the back one off. Right, that's all the stitching out. Try and flatten it out now because I'm going to take my groove tool and groove down the middle here so it folds better because that wasn't done before so that's why it didn't fold neatly. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut through all this stitching and I'm going to leave that one on. Then I'm going to glue a new rand on. But before I do that, I'm going to take all this old glue off 
and I'll just use uh, some abrasive paper. I'm going to glue this up and clamp it. So that's one clamped up. Now I never clamp them all the same time because they've got a tendency to pull out even when you've got clamps on it. So I always do one side first, leave that go off, then clamp the other side. That's the pins and tube cut down. Now I'm going to go around the profile on the belt sander. Right, that's it taken down to the metal on the profile. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in the vise, and I get my little Dremel out, and I'm going to do the internal curves, so there and around there with the Dremel, everything else I can do on the belt sander. All the deep scratches are out of that now and that's nice and clean. I might have to go over it again with the, with the Dremel but with the lesser grit. We'll see when it's done how I feel about that. Yep, yeah, again somewhere now. Basically, I'm going to go on the disc sander and I'm going to sand that down at an angle, both sides, and then I'm going to round it off. I'm going to go on the drum side of the belt sander and I'm going to dig in here and here and then I'm going to do this motion on that end of the belt to round it all off and that's a 60 grit then I'll swap it to a 120 grit and I'll repeat it and then I go on the drum sanders now everything I'm doing with this knife can be done with hand tools but it'll take a lot longer. The worst bit would be regrinding the blade. You'd have to do that on stones by hand and it would take a while and there's no guarantee it would be accurate but it's doable. I know because when I started off every knife I made I filed the bevels on. This was probably the first 20 
I filed the bevels on. When they came back from heat treating, bear in mind, I left about a mill. I sharpened them all down on a rough stone. Then I went on the diamonds. So that's, if you've got one of my very early ones, the bevels aren't particularly even, and that's why. But my early ones are probably in the bin by now. Back to the sheath for now. Right, I held the knife in the sheath. I know it hasn't been shaped yet, but I thought to myself it's not going to fit. So what I've done, I've cut an extension to the rand. So I'm just going to glue that in there to give it a bit more thickness where the handle is. Nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, quite a few people make their sheaths like that anyway, and I used to. Now I just use the one and I heavily form it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So I'll rough that up now and stick that on. There's the sheath glued up. I need to leave that now. About an hour probably. I'm back in the workshop now. It's been 12 days since I was last in here because I've had a flu virus and I haven't been at all well. But I'm back today, back in work. I'm still not feeling 100%. But I'm going to shape this handle. I'm going to sort this sheath out. So this had been clamped up now for 12 days. So that glue was definitely gone off. Right, handle shaping. Right, so that's shaped on a rough 60. I'm going to change that belt now to a worn 80 just to smooth it off a bit. Due to the narrowness of this tang, I'm going to keep this handle quite square because if I do it too round, then it's just going to turn in the hand. So I'm going to leave it quite a square profile. And well, it's pretty good now. That's a worn 80. I'm going to put it on the drum sanders now and take it down to a nice finish. Before I do that, I'm going to sort this sheath out on the belt sander and clean the profile up.
there we are that's that cleaned up and profiled it's not perfect but after I drill it and stitch it I'm going to be dip dyeing it and forming it with the knife obviously I'll be covering the knife up with the cellophane ramming it in so it'll have a nice new coat in a dye and it'll have the shape it needs Well, that's more or less done now. I'm quite happy with that. Looks tidy. I'm going to take my Dremel and I'm just going to clean around in here any uh, little little scratches or anything. I'm going to get them out. Then I'm going to put it on a 400 grit mop, 3M mop, just to finish it, and then the sheath. Done. I'm quite pleased with that. It's been narrower than I personally like, but. That's a vast improvement on these skinny scales. Now we need to wrap this up in cellophane. And I just wrap this up and then I go over it with uh, electrical tape. That's all covered up. I'll just wrap around here and here with Electrical tip.
yes, saddle stitch. I think I'll just use black, black thread. And we're so far so good. And I'm not going to bore you with stitching this. Bit hard going through, but it's done. I'm just going to go over the stitching now with the over stitch wheel. And the last thing I'm going to do today, I'm going to dip dye this and ram the knife in. Here's my dye, and this is a mix of Fiblings professional oil dye and biethanol because the biethanol makes it nice and nice and runny and it also evaporates off so you can get it nice and wet and it doesn't take that long to dry. And I'd like to thank Badster for that tip. I'm going to leave this soak in and then I'm going to dip it again. And I really don't want to knock this over because there's probably about 40 pounds worth of dye in here. So knocking that over would be a catastrophe. And that's it for today. I'm going to hang that up now and leave it till tomorrow. Before I leave this afternoon, I will pull the knife out. Back in the workshop. Just taking the, all the tape and everything off here. Now I need to clean it up with a bit of acetone and give it a strop.
done, knife's done. Just gonna finish off the sheath. And one thing I did notice, unfortunately, the sheath has still got residue of whatever was put on top of it last time. I didn't actually notice it until it dried. So I'm gonna try and scrape this off before I put a finishing coat on it. And I'll finish taking that off and I'll just put a little bit more dye on it and leave it go off for an hour. So we've got a few little dinks from the old stitching. If I use edge coat, which is thicker than dye, I can fill that up. Edge coat's gone off, so final thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna seal it all with acrylic resolution. Best way to put this on is with uh, a little sponge pad. Better put a glove on. And the reason I'm putting a glove on is because it's easy to put fingerprints on the leather with this stuff. So I wear a glove, hold it there first. Go inside. And I basically now just keep rubbing this in. You can build this up with several coats. I don't bother. I just do it this way and it seems fine. This leather is old, so it doesn't really soak it up like, uh, like fresh leather does. But it'll still be better than not doing it at all. Leave that dry, and I'm done. And that's a wrap. Done. Well, that turned out a lot nicer than I expected. I'm quite pleased with that sheath. And after day for a minute, it does sit in nicely. Well, I'm gonna give this back to my pal, Dan. And I know that a friend of his has just got into bushcraft and he's looking for a bushcraft knife. So that's a New Year gift, courtesy of Dan and myself. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It took forever to make because I was unwell. But apart from that, it worked out just fine. Well, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your comments, I appreciate your views, and I certainly appreciate a thumbs up.